Christian here from CK Wraps. So I'm gonna wrap the fender on this Mercedes S63 in Hexus's, Hexus's, uh, titanium chrome, super chrome. I had the other side done. Uh, so I'm gonna show you what I want to do is get my hands wet with it first, my feet wet with it, hands wet because I'm using my hands, uh, so that I could have some experience and techniques that I picked up along the way because I've never used it before until this roll. So, to start off, uh, the film is very high tack, so just to let you know, it's going to be very sticky. I've been using tack reducer on larger panels. The vinyl only comes 54 inches tall, so you have to keep that in mind when you're trying to do hoods and things like that. You might have to do that in sections. This one is done in three sections uh, to follow the best body line possible. Unfortunately, it didn't reach the better body line, which is the outside. If it did, it would have been a little bit, it would have hid the seam a little bit better, I, so I had to do it on the inner body line. Uh, so we have seams, three sections on the hood. The rest of the car can pretty much be done in one piece other than like bumpers and stuff like that where you might need inlays. Uh, the air release works reasonably well. Uh, it does get glue lines if you do push down on bubbles and things like that, so you got to be a little bit careful. Uh, on the fender, I'm not going to use any tack reducer, so we're going to leave it like this. Uh, customers request to leave the bumpers on the car, so just wrapping them with it on. Uh, rest of the stuff we could take off, door handle, mirrors, trim pieces, stuff like that, but bumpers stay on. Uh, it's black, it's a black car, so not the end of the world as far as that goes. Uh, we don't have to, we can wrap as far in as we can and it'll cover pretty much everything. Uh, otherwise, let's get to it. So the piece that I'm using is approximately 36 inches tall and 54 inches long. I cut vertically into the roll, so I cut 36 inches wide and ran the, ran the height of the roll to have a 54 inch piece. Uh, the fender is pretty close to being 54 inches long. I think it's like 52, 51. So it gives me a little bit of excess, which is perfect. Um, car is in reasonable shape. The hood's splatter with all kinds of imperfections like stone chips. So the chrome unfortunately enhances that a little bit. Otherwise the rest of the car is in pretty good shape. You can see there's a scuff mark down here. That's not coming off. It's just hit something. Anyway, it's not, not a big deal. So we're gonna show you how to wrap this fender right now and we're gonna get to it. So I'm gonna put the GoPro on. And if you have any questions about uh, this material in general, feel free to drop the comments below and uh, I'll answer them the best that I can. A couple things that I'm using right here are the gecko patches because the car is composite aluminum body and nothing is magnetic on it. So my magnets don't work and we're using a very difficult film it's very difficult to position or keep in place without having magnets on the car. So this helps tremendously. Again, all the stuff that I'm using today in the description below. Uh, what I'm also going to be using is the shield guard. So this is going to create a barrier between my squeegee and the surface of the, of the vinyl. And this vinyl comes with a protective cap and there's a couple of different things about it. So I'm gonna bring it over. Interesting, it's an interesting vinyl, to say the least. So hopefully my gecko patch will stay, should be fine. So this vinyl has, it has a plastic backing, which is pretty interesting. I'm gonna position this where I need it. When installing this, uh, I definitely wouldn't recommend trying to do this alone. Also because the vinyl is very sticky, you want to mask off anywhere that you've already wrapped for the most part because it's. It, I noticed that it has a tendency to want to lift the other vinyl off of the, let's say the hood, if I happen to overlap it. So it's very, it's that sticky. So it'll actually pull the old, the vinyl that you've already laid up. Uh, otherwise, it has a protective cap, which is very difficult to remove. You, I've gotten kind of gotten the hang of it. And it's also a little bit difficult to cut with a snitty or a cutter. So with it being so thick, it's terribly thick when you get it. It's not the vinyl that's actually the thick part, it's the, uh, it's the cap and the liner on the back. So the vinyl itself is actually fairly, fairly thin. Uh, a couple of nice things about it, it doesn't damage easily, which is really nice. And uh, you can reposition it, but again, it's very difficult to use. I'm going to cut this out of the way. See, my, my cutter is having a terrible time getting started. But again, once you get it started, you're good. Let's just make sure that uh, I'm leaving myself enough here. We're going to cut out excess, of course, because it's just going to cause us more resistance. Oh, that's 
two magnets might have been better. Just got to be a little more careful. Let's push, position that back up to where I need it. Try and hold it. I have a ton of scraps, obviously, with the with the panel being sorry, with the vinyl coming in at the size that it is at 54 inch. It'd be, if it was 58, it would have made all the difference in the world. Unfortunately, it's only 54. Try and save what I can. It's going to be very. The pieces are going to be very useless, though. Like, there's only so many door handles and stuff that the car has. Only has two. Mirrors aren't even getting done, so they're staying black. But either way, this is pretty much it, guys. So, what I like to do is, I'm going to try to remove the cap first, and let's turn the GoPro on. So, in order to remove the cap, what you're supposed to do is use. I'm just going to cut a piece of this out. You're supposed to use a piece of tape or anything like that and you kind of start it on the edge and try to pull it back. It's not, uh, it's not the easiest thing to do. I think they have on their website, they have an actual product. So, that, so this is the liner right here and you can see it's a clear, it's not paper, it's plastic. It's pretty interesting. It keeps it, it keeps the vinyl very stable and very strong. Let's try and go over to this end. Oh, lost my piece. No big deal. So instead of fiddling around, I'm going to just remove the liner and the backing. I don't really need tack reducer on the fender because it's uh, it's not the most difficult part. You'll see how sticky it is, though. It's gonna be it's gonna be pretty sticky. It's probably actually better to uh, leave the cap on initially when you're trying to do the backing paper. So I got to come up here. backing paper it's better to leave the cap on when you're removing the liner it keeps the vinyl a lot more stable so I notice like quicker pulls are a little bit easier kind of like when I, what I do with Vivid now I can squeeze you this to an extent it's not impossible but the only thing is that the, the liner the sorry the cap is very uh, rigid and it doesn't stretch whatsoever even with heat so there's the door edge, I'm fine with that. I'm gonna squeegee some of this down. And the more I can squeegee with the liner on, or the cap on, the better. Because it's gonna keep it a little bit more smooth. And scratch free. Like I said, doing this alone is very difficult. So I've got something there, I don't know how that's possible. Actually, I have no idea how that even happened, so let's get this little thing out of there. I wiped this panel down like 10 times. There we go. So we're at the edge here. We can pretty much go up with this. I'm gonna go up to about there. Now, we need to stretch the vinyl across slightly in order to get rid of some of the slack here. So the cap will have to come off and I'm going to remove it. Again, it's not the easiest thing to remove. Actually, if you can find an edge that's a little bit odd and you can see the clear layer separating, then sometimes it happens when you're cutting. But it's, even when you get it like this, it's very difficult. Hopefully you guys can see in the video. No, I can see it slightly. So I haven't really found an easy way. Sometimes the tape thing works. I've tried duct tape. I've tried all kinds of like stronger tapes and stuff like that. I mean, I tried the vinyl because the vinyl is pretty aggressive and I figured it would do a good job. So let's cut another piece since the vinyl is pretty sticky. Let's try this again. 
it's not going to be the fastest uh, fender wrap. So I'm just trying to hook an edge here. It worked really well a couple of times, and then it just doesn't want to work after that. There we go, there we go, see it? There we go. <laughs> so that's kind of the trick, you just gotta play around with it a little bit. I'm sure there's an easier way. It says to go on the website, but I, I didn't, to learn how to do it, it came with a little note notice on the front of the vinyl. So we're just gonna remove this very carefully. Like I said, this vinyl is pretty forgiving, which is really nice. What you end up with is a ton of scrap, like plastics all over the place. They don't, they don't fold up nicely, so a little bit difficult to uh, dispose of. So I'm gonna bring this back. And you have to be careful with this because it has a tendency to rip. add a touch of heat. People said to use like infrared heat heaters or pod steamers and stuff like that. I'm okay with the heat gun, it's not, it's not terrible. And the film can take quite a bit of heat and a very reasonable amount of stretch. Again, I like to kind of get that down like one shot, boom, right? So I've got it stuck to the hood. Could have masked off a little bit more, I suppose. And let's get it, lift it off of this edge. I need it above this edge right here. When doing it alone, it takes quite a bit of muscle. I don't know where this stuff is actually coming from. I don't know if it's like the glue or not. I'm gonna have to look though, because it's been happening a lot actually. It's gotta be the glue, because I can't even see anything. Can you guys see anything? Like there's an imperfection there in the paint, that's fine, but I just, you know, there's like a bunch. Trying to not. If I damage this, I damage this. I have to. I have to try though. So, okay. Let's put it back. Okay. So you don't want to stretch with your fingers behind it. That's going to be bad news. You can use the palm of your hand, that's fine. But if you put pressure with your fingertips, you're gonna, you're gonna mess it up. It's hard work, it's not easy. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab some shield guard. Help this glide. So you can see why you want to mask off a lot, basically as much as you can for the most part. Let's finish up the top. So we're just kind of rolling it. I try not to stretch it. This is like the pre-stretch that I do, and then after that, I'm just trying not to stretch it anymore. Cool. We're at the edge. I'm gonna do a relief cut here so it stays right where I want it to be. There we go. Well, let's go in here, and I'm gonna pop this up. 
so that I can actually lay it in to the recess. So that means I'm going to lift all this. Okay. Cool. I don't know how they actually teach you how to do this. Uh, access training is probably in France, so a little bit far away. But this is how I've been doing it, and it's been working out really well. So again, I'm going to hold that there and just get this down slightly so they don't come back when I lift it up again. There we go. And now, see the air will build up. We have to be careful. We have to be careful of wrinkles like that too. Don't want to squeeze you over those. But again, it's pretty forgiving. Just a little difficult to use. It's the, it's the aggressive nature of the adhesive that's, that's the uh, difficult part. Uh, I think the whole point of it to be aggressive was to ensure that it does stick into recesses and things like that because you don't want your chrome wrap lifting. That would be a bad, a bad situation. Right here, I'm gonna fix this up. I have to pull down. I'm gonna keep that flat. Right. Oh, more flat. Use my finger to push. I use my finger to push down the uh, wrinkles. Sometimes it helps a lot. Always trying to keep your hands on the outside. All right, I got somewhere. So I'm just trying to follow and read these, see what's happening. I have to read these wrinkles. The vinyl is quite pliable, which is nice, uh, in small doses without any heat, so which I enjoy. Again, the, the material price on this is about 3,000 Canadian dollars, so it's, it's up there and you don't want to make mistakes. Every mistake is costly. We tried to do the hood in one piece just for the, you know, just for the fun of it. And, uh, and uh, we ruined one sheet for the hood. So that's, that was a $200 piece. Why not try it? You know, like you have to push the limit sometimes in order to learn. Okay, so we're getting to this point now where I can just use this tension line follow this down put a relief cut eventually if I need to we'll see so right here I'm going to put a relief cut bit. Alright, we just squeeze you down to the bottom, laying into everything that we possibly can. Alright, it's looking good. I'm happy with it. This part's easy now, it's all tight, so I'm just gonna lift it up. And then popping it up again is, is the trick here. Really quick. All right, fender's wrapped. So let's do all the cutting and stuff. I'm gonna check the time on the camera. We're at 20 minutes, but that's not 20 minutes of wrapping. So for here, we're gonna cut on the hood side. Back of the blade means the back of the blade along the hood's edge, okay? That's as simple as that. So we're going to find the hood and we're going to push down and through the vinyl, okay? And then the back of the blade is going to run on the bottom side of the hood. Hopefully you guys can see all that. We 
try not to pivot our blade or put it too deep because we don't want to cut into anything. As I get down towards the end here, I'm going to come out. I've masked it off and I'm going to leave myself a little tab so I can do the corner, okay? That's about it. Let's get around here. So I'm going to start where I left where I began on the other side, the first cut, and just come out, and this piece can go. Done. That piece is done. Now what we're going to do is, what I'm going to do is cut through here. Again, we don't want to cut deep. And we don't need a lot to go around this. The fender is quite thin, okay? Right now, what I'm going to do is take my glove and I'm going to do some edges with heat and my glove. So I'm going to cut here. It's all masked off. So the trick is to do this area first and this area first before we do the wheel well area. See how easy it'll, it'll just run. This vinyl will just run, so you gotta be careful. You have to be very careful of that. Oh, see, I didn't even quite cut through and it left a small layer. It's fine. Let's see if I can get it going still. Again, leave myself that tab there. Now for here, we're gonna, we're just gonna cut it right on the edge here. I'm not even gonna push it in a little bit. I'm gonna cut it right on the edge of the light. It's black on black, and customers request to leave it here. So this is how we're doing it. This will give me enough to tuck in. Down here, let's start, let's come out a little bit first. And then we're gonna stay on the bottom edge. So what I'm doing is I'm staying on the bottom edge, right? So the final can be polished, we tested it out, so any swirl marks and scratches and stuff like that that won't heat out afterwards, we're going to polish it. And then we're going to go over this section right here, a bit of heat, make it a little bit smoother when we go to cut. Get, it'll only get so smooth so I mean I'm I would rather not damage the vinyl and so all the haziness and stuff that you see right now is going to go away when I wipe off the shield guard I haven't stretched the vinyl so there's no reason to have haziness off the wheel well area until it goes to the bottom here and then might as well cut a bunch of this away just checking the time because I'm using that camera for audio so I'm gonna use my hard squeegee right here soften the vinyl and tuck it in roll over what's left. It'll be enough, it won't go anywhere. 
that uncertain with the amount of attack that the vinyl has. Plus you're gonna be thorough with being, you know, not stretching the vinyl on the edges and stuff like that. It is chrome, so we can only stretch it so much anyways. So I'm really not that worried about it pulling back. We go in there right up to the edge, you'll feel that with your thumb. Start somewhere in the middle. Back of the blade on the backside edge. That's the easiest way to do it. That's just the carpet that's in there, it's a little carpet, so I'm hitting that. We go over that one more time with heat. Gonna go in the bottom here, finish up all that. I'll open the door to do in here. Makes a lot more sense. Here I can start going around. And then for here, I just want to get around those corners slightly. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna soften the vinyl, stretch it out, because it does shrink like everything else. Same deal for this one over here. Stretch it out, bring it around. We reapply heat and it shrinks back, right? We use the hard edge of the squeegee and some heat to push corners away. The edge is right there, which is perfect. It'll be easier to do the inside nicer once I open the hood. I can actually do it like this, it's fine. But I'll have to do the front corner. Let's check out the time. All right, let's open this guy up. So right here could potentially wrinkle up if I don't heat enough. So we're gonna, this is the corner to really focus on. get it around. The rest is pretty straightforward. You just work a little, by, a little bit at a time. Over here, again soften it up, pull the vinyl out, and around. Get it around. We heat it up and we shrink it. Excellent, it's all the way on the back side. Looks lovely. Now I'm gonna pop the hood, finish up this little guy right here, and that's gonna be that. So let me find this thing. There we go. Let's check the time again. We're just gonna restart the camera at 28 minutes. All right. So again, I'll just kind of heat this up, pull it through to give myself a nice little corner. Heat. Heat you gotta use to make these edges really nice and tight. And the wider ones here, I'll use my finger to get them going first. This keeps the wrinkles away over a wider area. Sometimes the squeegee is a little bit too refined of a tool for it. So if this was a white car, I mean, he might have a different opinion on taking off the front bumper so we could take out the headlights because wrapping in there, it would probably show a little bit of white. So I just gotta trim off that little bit. It's actually just gonna rip off. It's even better. So we can check out the corner here. It looks friggin' mint. You guys can see there, there you go. Let's finish this over here. So again, we're gonna need a special tool here to get in here really nice. Which is going to be my wraps to flex. I'm 
beautiful. Right? Whenever holding the heat gun too long in one spot, you gotta keep it moving. It's really tight right here, so let's push that through. There we go. Now we can finish up this section right here. So I'm gonna heat it, pull it around the bottom a little bit, and then I'm gonna cut it off. Right, for those of you who may not have believed the Instagram picture from the fender on the other side, there you go. You can see what it's gonna look like. If you guys were watching or following me on Instagram. Perfect. Now we can cut out the rest. I'll wipe it off and we're done. It's not bad, it's about 30 minutes or so. Just taking my time. This one's a bit awkward to get at. camera back so you guys can see. I will have to go over that with heat obviously, always. So I'll go over both those corners that I just did, tighten them all up. And I mean for chrome corners, uh, it really doesn't get a whole lot better than that. So they look pretty good. If you're worried about them coming up, just add a little bit of heat more from the backside. That's what I do. And we're good. So let me wipe it off. And take this off so you can kind of see things a little bit better. I don't think there's anyone in the world who has a video on installing this stuff. So here you guys go. Grab a clean little towel and wipe, wipe it off. You just don't push very hard. That looks great. There's the one imperfection that's there still, which is fine. I knew it was there. That's it, guys. So, that's the fender wrapped. Let's turn off the GoPro. All right, guys, hope you liked the video on how to install the Texas Titanium Chrome on the fender. Uh, maybe we'll do a couple more videos on how, I, how I'm doing this stuff. Again, it's brand new for me and I'm learning as I go. So, videos are a little difficult to do sometimes. That's why I did the other side first, just to kind of get some experience and some practice with it. Uh, blew through a couple of pieces, obviously to get some experience and practice with it as well. Uh, guys, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching, take care.